Hi crafty friends, it's Audra Monk the Crafty Yogi and welcome to the Crafty Corner. And a little Friday at 5 crafting which uh, was started around 520 and then is now restarted at 530. So for my live friends, I apologize profusely. I have no idea what went wrong. The camera like froze. So that was the one on my phone. So I'm not really sure. So we're going to power through and see if we can get a little info relayed here. And if not, I'll just do it as a separate video and post it again later. Okay. So we're here. I'm here. You're here. Maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Let's see. Let me try one more time. And I'll have to go delete that other video, which is only like a partial video. So I'll have to do that later tonight. Okay. Yay. All right. So I got three friends back. All right. There were a few friends and I know some people probably had to go when they realized it wasn't working. Okay. So let's jump in. We're making a birthday date organizer. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Lisa. Thanks guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, and, and I did come to a decision while we were, while I was fiddling with the camera. So let's look down here. Okay. So let me start over. We're going to make this cute little box that is made to hold little cards in which we are gonna put on a piece of paper that we can write the dates and the names of people's birthdays so that we will remember to send them on time. Uh, let's see. So what I've decided to start with is that I'm only gonna put, now what I did was I just made a table um, and I could save it as a PDF and if anybody wants it, I'll share it with you. Um, let me show you what it looks like. All right, so I hope this is not too disjointed because now I've thought like 12 things. So what I did was I just made a table and I printed it out on our cardstock like this. Um, and then I cut it down so that you could still see a lot of the pretty paper around it. And it's going to go on here. So what I have decided is I'm just going to put it on the front side, one side, and have the other side that has really pretty paper uh, be... Uh, the DSP for now because then later if I need it I could add it right so that's my thought is keep it pretty because it's so pretty this is that birthday um, what is it called uh, I and it uses a lot of paper so that is my warning on this project you're gonna use a lot of your designer series paper so as I was saying for my friends that are demonstrator I don't know it's called birthday it's called butterfly something the thing was here, now I can't find it. Um, what I was saying is if you're a demonstrator and you've got a lot of leftover paper, this would be a great project, I think, to make to sell at a craft fair or to make a bunch of them and give them as gifts to your team or to your family. I just think it's super, super pretty and it shows off our paper. I thought this paper, this, um, what's it called? Flowering cactus or something? the whale paper so what you want is especially the way I'm thinking is you want a paper oh, this paper is so pretty oh my goodness I think I'm gonna have to make another one I'll have to give it to someone but um, it's nice to have a paper with a like a background pattern and then you know like even the cactuses although I might like to see those and then you know the other side to have something with a bigger print it could be fun so I thought this paper would be great for this project. Um, but this butterfly paper is super awesome. And you can do this with 12 by 12 paper. It will totally work. Okay, so let's talk about the box. How about we do that part first? That might make sense to start there. So let's move all this out of the way. Okay, so the box is pretty easy. It is a piece of paper. Let's make sure that's in the screen. Okay, and I have notes because I was working on this literally right before we started. So as I said, I saw this um, from a French demonstrator. I've got stray strawberries. Oh, that looks pretty on gray. I might have to think of that for later. Um, and I picked basic gray, by the way, um, versus black. Black would look really pretty too, but I like how our basic gray shows off our designer series papers. I mean, every one looks beautiful against basic gray. Um, and like the cactus paper, I think that would look pretty against basic gray. Or you might want to go black. Or I think the cactus paper, I would actually go early espresso. I think would show. Oh, look at those purple flowers. Oh, okay. Anyway, so this kind of paper is so great for flip books and fun projects like this. All right. So as I said, which no one will ever know except for my few friends that are here, 
is that I saw this on the demonstrator planning place. A French demo made one. It was really cute. I'm sure she had directions on her blog, and I'm sure it was in French. Um, I would love to learn French one day. Um, but, and then someone on my proverbial, my other group I'm in, um, she made one, and she said she made it with the French demos thing. She just used Google Translate and made it in centimeters. And I was like, I could do that. Or I could just make it up myself. So the easy peasy part is the cards are five and a half by four and a quarter. So then all I did, I should actually show you. So if you're ever making a box, and I'm not a box expert, I will tell you that right now. There is a lot of trial and error. So what I did was I'm like, okay, I think about two inches deep, but two and a half inches high. I want it high enough that when I'm looking at it, I could be like, oh, okay, there's January. And then I could flip it back, but I could see it there. So you have to decide that. Okay, so that's something to think of when you're making a box. Um, and then I decided how deep. And so then I just drew it out. And I will say it took me two tries because I messed up. I made this five and a half, but that's the same size as the card. So it needed to be bigger. And then find some, you know, I always keep a little bit of retired paper around. Um, or you could use computer paper, something to test it out on. And then you, you will get lots of scribbles and eventually you'll write it up neatly and share it with your friends. So I am sharing with my friends. The writing up neatly will have to come later. Um, this piece of paper is seven by 10 and three fourths. So see, it's perfect because our paper is 11 inches long. All right, and then I'm gonna tell you two different ways you can score this. The easiest way is that it is two and a half from each side because that's how tall the box is. But just to be nice and give you fancy numbers, on the long side, we are gonna score it at two and a half. So what I'm saying is you could also just flip this and score it at two and a half or score it at two and a half and then eight and a quarter. Which, if we turn this over, is two and a half. See, pretty easy. So it's easy when you know like how the sides are gonna be. And this is an open box, so that's even easier. And then on the short side, we are gonna score this at two and a half, see? And then four and a half, which is also two and a half from the end. So see, pretty easy. So let me say this neatly, okay. The 10 and three quarter side scored at two and a half and eight and a quarter. On the short side, which is seven inches, scored at two and a half and four and a half. Okay, and then that's all the scoring you need, so put your scoreboard away. You need some scissors. Snips would work, but um, what are these? These are some old creative memory. I need to clean them. Look at that goopy part. Um, something a little longer would be better, but don't use your, your ribbon scissors, okay? And then we are gonna, from the long side, cut up the tabs. And I'm gonna show you, we are gonna notch them a little bit because I've got a couple boxes that, actually I should show them to you so that way you know. And they're, it's not 100% a deal breaker in that I wouldn't use them. Um, well, I don't know, I think the one is, I'll show you, hold on. Okay, so cut that up. So you could do it like that, but what might happen is you get this where it's not even. See that? So I did, you know, there's a little trial and error. So I did not like how that came out. So, um, although it's funny because like on one side I got it pretty, pretty flush. So then I decided we should notch them. And so you don't necessarily have to notch the bottom piece unless you cut it uneven. So it's probably better just to do it. And so by notching, what it means is you take it from the corner and go towards the tip. Okay, and then I find it easy to go from the open side, and then we're gonna do this at the top one. Now, when we glue it, I'll give you tips on how to do that so we keep it even. All right, so I go from the corner of the tab. That one's kind of wonky, but that's okay. And it really shouldn't matter because hopefully we should not see this. Okay, but don't notch the big long one because that is the front of your box. We don't wanna do that one. And we've all done that before, been putting it, putting it together. And sometimes you make one and you're on the second one and then that's when you mess it up. 
that's always um, frustrating. <laughs> okay, and last one, but it happens. So in this case, this box is plenty big. I built the box first and then put the paper on. A lot of times when it's a smaller box, I'll put the paper on first. So you can do it either way. And in fact, I'm not even going to put paper on it for you today because I want to um, decide what I'm going to make it. But I wanted you to see how to make the box. Oh my goodness. This stuff is everywhere. Okay, so then we are going to burnish. I know I have a bone folder here somewhere. Perhaps. My favorite is when I know you guys can find it in the video. It's like, where's Waldo? You can see it, but I can't see it. I always think that's super funny. And I've done that when I'm watching some other craft video and they're looking for something. I'm like, it's right there. So at least on it, when it's live, you can type it in the thing and I might see it. But when you're watching it on a replay, sometimes it's pretty funny. Okay. But it happens that, you know, so we burnish all our sides. Okay. And then liquid glue is your friend, especially on a project like this with 80,000 pieces of paper, right? If you used your stamp and seal, you're going to go through it like wildfire. And it costs more than glue. So in this case, I'm going to recommend your glue. Oops, somehow I missed that one. And you want them burnished because they'll fold neater. All right, and then it's easy. These fold in the middle, and this folds up. Ta-da! Super easy. So let me talk to you about how I said about the gluing. Okay, so you're going to take your liquid glue and go about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Don't squirt it out a lot and give it a little glue. Okay. And then this is what happens. This is the part we want to be flush. And we're going to put that on. And on this, you would definitely want to use glue because you want to be able to move it if you need to. And sometimes, you, whoa, sometimes you get it on wrong. And then you know what? You either tear it apart or you're like, oop, that one is not going to make the cut. Okay, so you do that. And then we do it again. I like on this one to do the two on the same side. Felt... Um, the easiest for me so you could try that okay and then that goes on and we get that nice and flush and we just need to hold it for a couple seconds all right I don't want to jinx the video but at least it's working now <laughs> and then this one Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put glue on that one, too, while I'm here. Okay. Hopefully that was not a bad idea. I think it's okay. Okay, get that one in. And this one in. And that is sticking up higher, but oh well. It'll be okay. Oh, you know why? because I did not cut that one. Well, that we'll put that one at the back. No one will know. Okay, and there is your cute little open top file box. All right, the paper for the inside and the front is all the same, and let's see which one it is. It is two and five eighths by, sorry, it is five and five eighths by two and three eighths. So this is an eighth inch border. You could also make this a quarter inch border. And then what I did here is I just put a piece on the inside, both sides, because that covers up that, you can't see it because of the lighting, but it covers up where it doesn't meet, that little bit of unevenness that might catch on things. And then I thought I should put it in the bottom to make it sturdy. I didn't put it on the sides. You could cut a piece and put it there too. And then you cut it for the outside and decorate it. Could you decorate this outside up? Let's see. I still have some of these stray butterflies uh, laying around. Um, you could. Could you cut out a thing and put... What's that birthday set? I think the French lady used that birthday set, which is on my list of things to use this week. Um, I'm looking for it. Uh, it's the celebration one. Ah, no, not that. Um, you could do this one. Maybe that's what she did. Newsflash, birthdays found to be good for health. Study should, that's kind of cute. And put it in, you know, put it in a punch. So you could put that on there. I think that would be fun. 
um, you could decorate it. Just make sure you don't make it too bulky though. So when the cards are in there, they're fine. Okay. Next, uh, as I said, hold on. So we made a box. It's a pretty easy box because it's just an open box. But I wanted you to understand like how if you're making a box, like how to play with your um, dimensions. You know, this would be a very cute box to make a lid for, for like a gift. It would be very cute. Um, okay. Then, as I said, if anybody wants this, I will um, send you this PDF. Just you got to give me your email. I just printed out, um, I widened the margins and printed um, a table. Um, I'm in no ways a computer expert at all. So you probably can make a better one than me. But then I cut it down. And so the way I cut it, because you know, there's still that border, I'll show you. So if you do make one similar, oh my goodness, all my things are flopping around here. Okay, so what I did to cut it is, I cut it at the five and a half because I didn't want this part on there. Now somebody could probably make it really pretty and have that part, but I like I like the lines going all the way. So it kind of like an index card. You could probably just put an index card on if you wanted, but I cut it at five and a half. And then I flipped this over and hold on, I did write it down. And I made it four and seven eighths, which is right under five. Okay. And then this one is cut at three and five eighths. And so you could ha you could do like four and a quarter and then cut it down. Um, but I kind of liked how this would had a bigger space. So I went with that three and five eighths. So that's a three and a half. And then you go um, one more. Okay. <laughs> you were hitting sad icons, Beth. That's pretty funny. <laughs> My favorite is when you see a post and it's like a happy post or something. And there's a grumpy, like that angry face. And you know they had to done it on accident, but they probably don't know. And I, I think that's really funny. Okay. And then this is going to get put on here. All right. So let me talk to you about the duo, duo oval punch. This is where we were on the first video. Um, basic gray and white. And you're probably like, Audra, where did you get that really cool January? I got it because every once in a while, you know, I showed you my um, studio tour. I do have a shelf of retired. This is really old Project Life by Stampin' Up! dated stamp set. And I thought, you know, one day I may want to have the months in print or cursive and the dates. Maybe for scrapbooking I would use this. Um, I don't know that I ever used it. And then today I was like, oh, I have a stamp. And for a second I couldn't find it. And then I did, but you know what? You could print out in your favorite font on our cardstock, which is what I did with this, right? Print out the months, use your favorite font. Just make sure it's the right size. I guess I'm gonna glue it on. Apparently I don't have any um, snail. It's over at the table. So, um, and then punch it out. Okay, let's put this on. Or write it by hand, it's okay. I mean, I'm super glad I have a stamp, but it's not a deal breaker. Yes, Beth, happy Friday. I'm so glad it's Friday. I've had a long week. Um, the owner of our yoga studio, she broke her leg. And so for the last three weeks, I have taught one, two, three, four, four, five, four or five extra classes, depending on the week. I've been saved by a couple snow days, and I actually did not mind. Um, although my Thursday class, the mor Thursday morning class is my regular class. They are going to get their Valentine's next week, which <laughs> I didn't even finish making them because I was like, oh, it's all right. Um, anyway, so I've been working a lot more. So, and so it's been really hard to keep up on the craft side of my business. So hopefully this week, she's at least going to do one of them. Um, because the cool thing about teaching yoga is you don't always have to do it all with your class. Um, although normally we do quite often, but, um. Yeah, I went and taught on crutches a couple years ago when I had a knee surgery. All right, so we're going to put that on the more patterned side. And then this little guy is going to go here. Okay, and so I'm only going to do one for right now. You're going to laugh because I'm going to, you know what? Yeah, I'm only going to do one because I'm going to leave the backs super pretty. 
And then if I realize later I do need more paper there, then I would add the paper and I would add this. So you might wanna do this if that's what you know. You, say you know in July, you have 20 birthdays. Um, you could do that, but I'm just gonna do the one, but I'm gonna put this on, well, I'd like to put it on with glue dots. Do I have any glue dots here? I do. All right. Okay, so I just need them across the bottom. Then my next question is, do I have little scissors? I do. All right, so, and we're just gonna do this one. Um, on a, something like this, you don't need to watch me do it 12 times, but we'll sum up. Okay, apparently this was unwrapped kind of far. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's that one. And I gotta make sure I got it in the right place. Okay, so they're going up here. So I would use a few glue dots. Don't skimp on your adhesive. I really think skimping on an adhesive does not actually save you money. If your things fall apart, it's not saving you money. Okay. And then that, it's so funny because I have so many things. That is going to go, you know what, I'm going to put it there. And then you would decide on, when you make yours, right, do you want all the tabs in the same spot? Or do you want to do like January, February, March, um, April, May, you know, make them go back and forth? It depends on what kind of file you want. Um, and I think that that is, you know, just something that you decide. Oh, it's so pretty. I am excited. I am going to fill this out and keep this somewhere close by. And then every month, so January is done, I would move it back here. And then I would move February. So I think I'm going to alter. I did three of each one. So I'm going to like, um, like alternate the uh, patterns. This is one of my favorite. I call this the rainbow unicorn background. Um, I just think that's what it looks like. So then I'm going to put February up here. Um, you could, if you wanted to be really um, clever, you could make them different colors. Like I like that this is all matchy, matchy, um, coordinated. But you could do, you know, a pink page, a, a blue page, a green page, a, a Christmassy page. You could get as creative as you want. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was a super cute, functional project. Um, yeah. So I think I covered all of the things. I think that's all you need to know. Uh, so there we go. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it. It's so cute. I could hug it. Okay. <laughs> now I'm hugging paper. I'm telling you, it feels nice. It looks nice. It's going to look great on my desk. Um, so I hope, especially if you're only seeing this video now, um, and weeks from now, I hope that it's okay. It's a little, was a little disjointed because this was my second take. Um, and when it's live, it's a little more disconcerting when it technology messes up for us. Um, but we get over it. We keep crafting. We keep having a great time. Um, what is else do I, should I sum up? I, if you're here at the end, um, the leprechaun the St. Patty's Day banners. I have five left. So if you want that, you need to let me know because I'm going to start making them. Um, hopefully on Sunday a little bit, but the RSVP is by Monday. They would go out um, by next Friday or Saturday, depending on how work goes. Um, Leprechaun banners. Um, the just cards went out today. So I've already contacted everybody who did that class. Um, uh, if you're ordering the chicken bundles, remember I have a free mini class that goes with that. So um, I can show you that later. And the butterfly bundle with this paper, you can get this paper starting in February. Maybe the 2nd, maybe the 4th, I don't remember, but it's in February. No, it is February. Sorry, oh, I don't even know what month it is. It's in March. You can start getting this paper in March. <laughs> <laughs> and the paper is limited edition. It's only until supplies last. Um, the butterfly stamps and dies, those will be in the new annual catalog, which starts in May. Um, but if you want the paper, you got to get it now. Um, yes, I think I'm getting a lot of this paper. Um, so there we go, my friends. I hope that you have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. For my East Coast friends, um, be careful out there. We're getting all sorts of random snow and ice and whatever. So um, stay inside and craft. You know, go for a careful walk, do some exercise inside. You can always do yoga. That's an inside sport. It's not even, well, it could be a sport, inside exercise. Um, okay, we're good. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Stay crafty.